When it comes to getting better with EQ for sound system tuning, you've got two major challenges. When you're actually on site on a show, you gotta move quickly, it's hard to slow down, you probably already don't have enough time to begin with. And number two, when you're at home, you don't have all the gear. So I'm excited to share with you that Open Sound Meter has a new set of features that helps you practice away from the gear. I'm fortunate enough to have a little Fostex here in my own processor, but not everyone has that. So I wanna show with you how to apply a math source and the built-in filters within Open Sound Meter to practice using EQ. You can see its effects on data that you can capture, and you'll also have access to my Open Sound Meter file, in which I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to do everything uh, when it comes to adding these features in to practice with EQ. Excited to share it with you. Make sure and grab it at the link below. Let's jump right in. Let me first walk you through my measurement setup, some key open sound meter settings, and then we'll start capturing some measurements and applying the filter sets within the math source in open sound meter and show you how to get a speaker that's uh, deviating and get it to flat. So first I've got the Evo mixer for my interface, the Evo 8. Input one is my measurement microphone right here next to me. That's in front of my handy dandy Fostex speaker. And it's gonna be our measurement source. Mic two is our reference. So out of output two of my interface that's being fed here from the signal generator, um, it's looping back into the interface to be my pink noise or reference source. Output one is feeding the speaker. So those are the two things that are being compared in a transfer function as taking a measurement, comparing it to my reference signal and showing us the difference between the two. So the mic one's my measurement, mic two is my reference. Mic three is my microphone right here in front of me, capturing my voice, just so you know what those meters are doing. So to open sound meter, I've got the three graph setting here. The top is my impulse response, middle is the phase graph, bottom is the magnitude graph, very similar to how you would set up smart. Here I've got the signal generator at the very top. You can turn it on with command G. I've got it on pink noise at neg 12 and it's going out those two outputs. Again, the first output is feeding my speaker, second output is looping back into my interface to serve as my reference source. Open Sound Meter does have a built-in loop, but I've honestly found it unreliable, so make sure and have your own. My interface does have a digital loop back, but just in case you don't have one, I wanted to use an analog loop so we could be on the same page. Now, if I click on measurement, we gotta set up a few key settings here, and then we'll add our math source in our filters. First, the averaging type, you're going to keep it on low pass filter, 0.25 hertz. Then the transform mode, we're gonna put it on LTW, or logarithmic time window. This adjusts the FFT size, and you can do that here with these different numbers, but here actually has a different FFT size per octave, and that gives us a different look at the data. And if that was all Greek to you, you don't have to know what's going on under the hood, but just know we need to have our transform mode consistent across this measurement and our filter type. So let's go ahead and do that. Keep our window function on Han or a Z filter on the input and make sure you have your measurement mic on input one as your measurement channel. And then your reference is input two. Again, have the analog loop. So that's why I'm choosing that. And my interface is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and zero out my measurement delay and make the PPO or points per octave or the banding smoothing on my graph here at 12 points per octave. Now I'm gonna turn on my measurement and the date is weird since I haven't set any test signal. But I'm gonna do Command G or I can click right here to turn on my generator. And I did two things after that. I applied the estimated delay to sync up my impulse response or the reference signal with my measurement. So I needed to have the reference signal wait for my measurement. So it was about right here. And then it zoop, moved over here to the center. And that was about 1.79 milliseconds of delay. And it was right, synced it right up. Then I did command C to capture the measurement. All right, so I've got the data here and the bottom shows the deviations of the speaker from flat. Again, we're not super far off, but I wanted to give us an easy example at first so we're not uh, being convoluted by a bunch of noise in a room or a weird speaker. This is a fairly flat speaker in a very flat um, or neutral environment since I got all my sand, sound panels here in the studio. I'm gonna rename this 
raw Fostex. Fostex is the maker of this speaker. I'm gonna right click here on the color and change colors. We got on this nice cyan color. And now to use the EQ, we're gonna com combine two features within Open Sound Meter. First, we're gonna do Command M and add a math source. You can also go to File and add, do Command M. And later on, we're gonna add a filter and that's where you do it here as well. I'm gonna rename this Fostex plus EQ. And I wanna choose a magenta color in this case. So on the left-hand side, we have different math functions. So we can take any data type and apply a math function to another data type. And we're gonna actually up do the apply function, which is what we're wanting to do. And I wanna use three filters in this example. So within this, I need to take our raw FOSS text, and then add three filters to it or apply three filters to it. So I'm gonna have a total of four. So these are empty right now because I've not chosen them, but let's go ahead and add our filters and then put them in these slots. So I'm gonna do Command F to add filters, one, two, three, and I'm gonna make them be peak filters. So how do I change that? If I click on a filter, I'm gonna change the transform mode to LTW. Again, we need to have them match for this to work. It actually shows us that here. Sources must have the same transform mode when we're here on Math Source. So I'm gonna go here, put an LTW, have the same sample rate. I know I'm at 48K, so I'm good there. I'm gonna go down here to the bottom and do, choose a peak filter. You can have a Butterworth, Linkwitz Riley, or Bessel low pass and high pass filter. You can do an all pass filter, which is a lot of fun, but we're gonna do a peak filter. So that's what we have here. And <laughs> I had a 25 dB again, put it back down to zero. And so this is 1K, 0 dB of the Q of one, and that's peak one. So let's do the same thing for the next two filters. LTW, keep it at 48K, put it on peak. And I don't know why it's adding all this crazy amount of gain. And I'm gonna rename it peak two. Go back here, LTW, peak. And now we're gonna put on peak three. Now I'm gonna turn all these so we can see our colors. I'm gonna make this, uh, put in these in the filter slots. So now we can add them all together. And now let's apply our colors. So that's that nice magenta color. So I'll change it now to green. Let's go to orange. Let's make him yellow. Now that I've done all the setup process, I can start playing with these filters to apply them to uh, the, the raw Fostex signal. Let me just test to make sure that it's working and then we'll play with the smoothing and start to mess around with the EQ. So I'm gonna click here, go to peak one. I'm gonna apply minus six dB of gain and I see here on Fostex plus EQ that this is now changed. So I'm saying here's the original Here's the peak that I applied, and now here is the change. And now I'll go to peak two, let's change this to a different frequency. Let's put it at a 5K and add 6 dB of gain, and I see that change too. So that one's working, let's go to peak three, 500 Hertz, let's do minus six, and boom, we see all these changes. So adding these three filters in has now changed our data. Cool, I know that they're working now, so let's zero them out. And now let's use these filters to get this raw response of the Fostex to flat. Again, it's not really far off, but I want to give you an easy example to start off with. Now I'm gonna apply some smoothing to bring this back down to one point per octave. This is a very broad strokes view, and I like to work that way, and I learned this from Pat Brown's workflow, of starting broad and then zooming in to get what you need to, because you might be able to do a lot of, uh, have, be very effective with just one filter and one spot. You don't wanna miss the forest for the trees. So that's what I did. So I went to the graph down here, clicked on it, and chose one point per octave. So now I see there are two deviations from the zero point on the graph or the, the center line on the raw Fostex. One's here, the center of it is about 167 Hertz. And then I have the center of it here about 8K. So that gives me an idea of like, okay, I can just apply two filters here and be really effective. So let's do that. So peak one, I have selected. I'm gonna go down here again. The center is about 170 Hertz. And I'm gonna apply minus two dB of gain. Let's do minus two and a half. 
And now I see these changing. And the, again, the magenta line is our, fi is our output of our filters um, applied here. And I've, I'm getting really close, which is pretty cool. So let's say I wanted to get really accurate. Let me hide this guy and hide these two. I could actually take our raw Fostex signal. I can select it and they'll go down to the bottom left and I can invert the data. Because what we're trying to do is apply basically an inverse filter of all of these to get to our desired response. So I can make this filter match exactly. So it looks like I need to tighten up the cue just a hair. Let's go to point, uh, point 0.8 and subtract a little bit more. Maybe a little bit tighter, 0.85. Uh, I guess I can't go that far of a decimal place, but looks like we're close enough there. I might need to hammer this out a little bit closer to 500. Uh, but this, again, very broad strokes is going to be effective. So now let's do the same thing with peak two. I'm going to select it, engage it. It's now orange. And it looks like here at 8K is about the center. Eight, one, two, three, zeros. Let's go minus 2 dB. And I'm really close already. I'm going to tighten up the cue. Let's go to 0.8. Now maybe 0.9. And now it's lined up pretty darn close. Again, our raw Fostex, I've inverted the magnitude data, so we need to invert it back to see what's happening. So I'm gonna invert it back. We see these two are just mirror images of that trace here. And now I'm gonna engage the Fostex EQ. And let's see how close we got. I'll hide these so we can make it easier. And now our magenta trace is showing us much closer to our zero line in the middle. So the blue is where we were. And now we have that guy right there. Uh, I now think I need to start to zoom in a little bit with our third filter. So now let's bring it to third octave waiting here. And now I can see more of these bumps. So now we're, this is a little bit sharper data, less, uh, more granular. I can see now the biggest deviation in my opinion is right here in the low mids. So right here at 400, I could bump those back up and I might need to play with the other filters too. So now I'm going to go to peak three. I'm just gonna look at the finalized response and see what my changes are this time instead of using the inverted graph. Go here to about 400 Hertz. I'm gonna add two dB. Yeah, I can see adding that in brought this mid range back to where it was, but now at the low end overall is a little bit too much. So with this peak, I'm gonna bring it right back down a little bit. Again, these are very small changes, just a dB or so. Let me see if I can, uh, Tighten this cue up, two and a half. Yeah, I think I'm in good shape there. So now here's a response of all three filters together and what's happening. And now here is the output of the speaker. So comparing a before and after, see the Fostex was here. And now here's the Fostex, Fostex plus EQ. And now we see we're closer to flat. So I can maybe add another right here at 1.2, maybe another here at 6K. Again, this is all definitely within a passable range if there was just a speaker out the box. Uh, but I just wanna show you how you can use the raw data you can capture, the math function, plus these filters to practice and understanding what EQ is doing. And what's really cool is we're not only seeing the magnitude response change, but I can see the changes in phase response as well. I know it's easy to get scared of the phase boogeyman. I'm like, oh no, is my EQ gonna mess up my phase response? In this case, it's we're not doing anything super drastic, so we're not seeing a huge change in phase response. So the purple line or magenta is our change here. It's tra tracking very similar to what it was on the blue. So again, no damage done there. So we have a more neutral response out of the speaker. Uh, at least from about 250 hertz on up is what I want. Uh, so we can keep going with some more filters. Maybe we can go all the way up to maybe one six per octave and do something there. But beyond that, I would, I'm not gonna try and hammer out anything to be more neutral. All right, a quick recap. We made sure and set up our measurement right, got a hold of our IO, went and routed our generator, went to our measurement, adjusted a few key settings, making sure we keep our transform mode consistent across our measurement and our filters that we add. We then created a math source. We chose four slots on the apply function with a speaker and three filters. We added in those three filters and make sure they were in the slot, adjusted their settings to match on the log, uh, logarithmic time window. And then we zoomed out a good bit, made the, the data really coarse, and then gradually zoomed in more and applied more filters to get our raw speaker closer to flat. 
another Easter egg is you can hit Command T. Now you have a target trace. So you can adjust this to get to a target curve that you desire, or you can just straight up import a target trace uh, via a CSV or TXT file. And then you could practice EQing a speaker to a target trace instead of flat. So that's the next place I would go. So do this on your own. If you got a speaker at home, or you can use even this file, practice using EQ, adding filters, and get comfortable with open sound meter in this new filter. Again, you can get this file at the link below in my audio toolkit. My name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and learning more a bit about measurement. I love helping you get amazing results out of your sound systems on any size show. I'll catch you next time.